The Boston Celtics won an overtime battle on a controversial game winner by Jason Tatum. A win's a win, but in a game the Celtics got away with one against the ethically tanking competitive Toronto Raptors, Tatum got away with a travel that the NBA announced they got wrong. Aside from that, it was a stone-cold dagger in the clutch from JT, and the last two-minute report also stated they missed a Davion Mitchell foul, which was an outright body check on Jalen Brown directly before Tatum sunk it, including one he clanked before the overtime period where he was wide open after Ochai Abaje conveniently fell over. Jason had missed his last 11 game-winning slash game-tying shots leading up to his game winner. That said, the narratives that Tatum isn't clutch should be abandoned. First of all, with a wild Celtics faithful at TD Garden all expecting something to go down in what was a playoff-style environment, combined with how desperate the Raptors were playing in an attempt to secure their first road win of the season, this winner took superstar-esque stage presence, regardless of it being a travel, and was heartbreaking for a Toronto team playing as hard as they were. Additionally, and more importantly, Tatum has the most field goals to tie or take the lead in the final five seconds of the fourth quarter or overtime since the 2019-20 season with 11, two more than the second-ranked DeMar DeRozan. Tatum is now tied for the most game-winning buzzer-beating three-pointers made in Celtics history. For those calling him a role player, the joke simply isn't funny anymore as Jason's leading the reigning champions in points, rebounds, assists, steals, and three-pointers made this season, and is one of the top candidates for MVP. That said, Jason had not only missed a ton of shots with the game on the line prior to his buzzer-beating walk-off 30-footer against Toronto, but a fair amount of jumpers within the game. Tatum was asked post-game how he maintains his confidence in the next shot after misses maintain your confidence like you said you knew you'd missed a bunch of shots especially the one at regulation how do you mentally stay in there and believe the next one's going in uh i got a lot of problems in life confidence has never been one of them um i work too hard uh at my craft i played too much basketball to ever doubt the next shot whether it's an in and out miss or whether i missed the entire rim um I know what I'm capable of, and you always believe that the next one is going in. Is it more like frustration rather than doubt? Yeah, frustrated. Um, are you want to make every shot you take, uh, especially an opportunity like that. You want to, you know, seize the moment. Uh, but we had overtime. We had more time, and second chance to redeem ourselves and figure out a way to still win the game. One of the major problems for the Celtics against Toronto was interior defense. For the Raptors, Jakob Pertl had a career-high 35 points, and Joe Mazzulla had high praise for the Toronto big man, stating, Jakob Pertl is one of the best guys in the league. He's a bear. You can't effing guard him. Getting Porzingis back in around a month's time will certainly help the Seas guard guys like Pertl, but speaking of the center position, filling in for Porzingis, 38-year-old in his 18th season, the godfather Al Horford dropped a season-high 18 points, and Al's longevity at his advanced age with all the mileage under his belt is astounding. Horford made 5 of his 10 triples, and without Al coming through in the clutch like he did, the Celtics wouldn't have won that game against Toronto. Horford gave his take post-game on both the value of the Celtics playing in close games, and how the game in general is changing. Um, uh... You know, I think it, you know, it obviously keeps us on our toes and, uh, you know, more than anything, um, I think you guys have heard me say this before, but, um, you know, every year it, it's, it's different. And, uh, and even though the, you know, we had obviously success last year, um, this year, you know, we have to, you know, figure out again, how to get things done, how, how to win. Um, and, uh, and uh, you know, Toronto played a heck of a game. You know, I feel like every team that we're playing against, they're giving us their best shot. And, um, and, and, and for us, it's just continuing to find ways. Um, and uh, to your question, I think it is good, but, you know, uh, I feel like all this stuff uh, will make us better. Is there a feeling of like, we know certain things that we don't have to do? Is there, are, are there details that maybe in the early going that you think maybe you've skipped over because we know we can do that later. Is there is there anything like that? What, what is that challenge having won 
and now trying to do it as a champion? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think there is that. I think with our group, if there's good focus. I think it's more of, you know, us. Um, uh, I feel like the game is being played a, a little different this, this season. Um, you know, in the NBA, I feel like uh, you're seeing teams, um, uh, the, the game continues to change, I feel like, year by year. And, and, uh, and even from last year, I think it's different. I think, uh, I mean, I don't know if the stats support it or anything, but I feel like people are shooting more threes now. People are playing more of a style like we play. Um, and, uh, and it's more and more teams. So I think that's an adjustment. Um, I, I think it is. And, um, and for us, it's figuring out how to win with this new style of play, how people are playing now. And you know, we're having success and you know, we're probably not winning like we're you know, expected to, but um, the biggest thing is that we're finding ways to get it done. And, um, and we know that we still have a lot of room to grow as a group. So that to me is encouraging. Another center for the season, Luke Cornett, had four points off the bench and was the team's second highest plus seven. After finishing a fast break layup, the cornball Cornett had this hilarious celly. Staying with the second unit, and it was Sam Hauser really stepping up, which was huge for Boston, as on an off night for Peyton Pritchard, Uncle Sam's 14 points off the pine were a Celtic high by far off the bench, and number 30 was also the team leader in plus minus at plus eight. Jalen Brown led the team in scoring with 27 points as it was an efficient eight for 16 showing from JB. Despite dealing with a hip injury, in the month of November, over five games, Brown's kept up his season average of 25 points per game while shooting an impressive 47.2% from the field. Considering Brown's only shooting 29% from three-point range on the season, yet still averaging the second-highest scoring average of his career, once his flow from deep begins to increase as the season progresses, that could very well entail that Brown's current 25.6-point-per-game average is in for a hefty boost. There were classic comments trying to split up the Jays based around Brown's lack of reaction to Tatum's game winner, but here was Brown playfully shoving JT. Entering a matchup against the undefeated Cleveland Cavaliers, you could argue there's a cause for concern here with the Seas. The Celtics nearly lost to the bottom-feeding Raptors without Scotty Barnes, and did take an L to the Hawks without Trey Young. If they want to keep their NBA Cup hopes alive on Tuesday, they're going to have to perform a lot better on both ends than they did in those two matchups. That's without a doubt. Should the Celtics be concerned right now, or is it too early in the season? Do you care about the NBA Cup? Let me know down below in the comments section below. This was your boy D Flow, and I'll see you next video.